Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with a story about a waiter named Gray who had a rough day at a busy waterfront restaurant. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. I made an entitled customer wait for hours after they complained about slow service. I'm a waiter at one of the nicest restaurants in my hometown. I'm pretty personable and always end up striking friendly conversations with my tables. I have a million and a half stories about people who were seemingly very friendly but ended up stiffing me on my tips, so I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't be a jerk to your server until after you receive your food. It's a beautiful day and the restaurant is on the water. Every nice day is absolutely packed. My restaurant does not take reservations of any kind ever, so people have to go in person, request a table, leave, then come back later to eat. Normally, locals understand and expect this. There's no problem. But we're a tourist town. When newcomers try to get tables, there's always trouble. This is important in a second. Now, I'm swamped. I have my section full for the entire day and hadn't had time to go on a single five-minute break since the start of my double shift at 10 a.m. It's now around 6 p.m., a couple lands at one of my tables in the corner, and they're already upset because they had to wait to get a table after a new girl had tried to take a reservation for them over the phone, and they had to be called back and told that they had to come in to reserve a spot. I nod to them, acknowledging that I see them after I notice them glaring daggers at me, as if to say, get your butt over here now. I was dealing with a particularly crappy table at the time. Any server reading this will know the type. Every freaking time you come back, they need something else. They ask for ketchup, you bring ketchup. Then once back, they ask for refills on drinks, you run and do that, and then they need salt, and then they want to order more food, blah, blah, blah. Now, at this point, there are two things you need to understand. One, they had sat around waiting for a table for over an hour before being sat, and two, our restaurant has food runners. For those of you who are not familiar with this, it's a group of high school kids that, for around 6% of all tips the restaurant receives, will take care of running your food to your table for you. Now, I was also the only person that treated the food runners like human beings instead of pack mules. Because of this, my food runners were very well organized and would happily help me out when I was swamped. A food runner had gone to my table, offered them water, brought them silverware, and told them I would be over shortly. Five minutes later, I roll up and start my speech. Hello, my name is Gray, and welcome to the restaurant. Sorry for that wait, as you can tell I'm really busy, and the man cuts me off. What's your name? He asked condescendingly. Gray, I replied. Gray, he starts up again. Why is this the first time you're coming to the table? We've been waiting here for over 45 minutes. They had literally gotten there no more than eight minutes ago and thought I hadn't noticed them walk in. You are by far the worst waiter I've ever seen. You should have greeted us and walked us to our table. Another lie as I saw the hostess do this like she does for every other person that eats here. Now, I was already having a bad day, and I was on my second part of a double shift that I knew would go well past midnight, so I was having none of it. This guy goes on to insult my posture, my accent, my clothing. I'm wearing an effing uniform and a myriad of other things. At this point, I'm staring straight through him, not listening to a single word. Finally, he says, we want another server now. You should be fired for your incompetence. I smile. He would not have asked for that. He basically just gave me the green light to F up the rest of his evening. I'm friends with everyone in the restaurant. When I have a request, I can usually be handled almost instantly. But this time was going to be different. I walk to the hostess's table and see one of my best friends, let's call her Emma, crying under the counter. Emma is a four foot six, adorable Hispanic girl who was 20 years old. She was just a tiny little thing and she needed a step stool to address people at the front desk. She had a cabinet that she could literally sit in and take naps and she was in there crying. I gave her a big hug and asked her what was wrong. She said a couple had chewed her out for 10 minutes straight about how terrible she was. And guess who it was? my freaking table. I asked her if she wanted some revenge and she said, hell yes. I told her to take as long as she could, but apparently I was not good enough and they wanted a new table. She smiled. She knew what was going to happen. I told my water buddy, John, that Emma was going to send him a table in an hour or so and went back to work. 
That couple watched three tables sit down, order their food, eat, pay, and leave before they even got to order. They sat and wanted the entire time to just try and stick it to me. The look on their faces as I happily and efficiently took care of all my tables right in front of them was priceless. Since they were not my table anymore, I didn't visit them once. After they were moved, ate, and left, I asked the waiter that took their table how they were. He said they were very polite and patient with them. I think that'll be the last time they treat waitstaff so horribly. Whomever the guy was with probably chewed him up one side and down the other over his rudeness, so that's why he was nice after he moved. And our second story. Written up for being chronically late, but wait. This happened back in the 1980s before, you know, computers on every desk. My employer was a small company, only 10 or so employees. I was totally committed to the job and gave it my all, not leaving till all the day's work was done, sometimes staying hours after work to do so. I'd been there more than five years at the time and was a key employee by then, the one people went to for help with complicated tasks. I did a prodigious amount of work and always had stellar performance reviews, yada yada. Occasionally, traffic or whatever would make me a few minutes late for work. I didn't worry about it. We didn't use timesheets or a time clock, and everyone was salaried, erroneously, but that's a different story. Then one of the owner's favorites was promoted to VP and put in charge of HR. Before this, we were equals in the company. One of the first things she did was give me a written reprimand for insubordination for being late one too many times. Eyes wide open now, I took the hit and began my campaign. From that date forward, I entered the office one minute early, got to my desk, and was seen to be busy, waited for 30 minutes to go pour myself some coffee, I stopped work and left the building every day at exactly the end of business hours, leaving unfinished work on my desk. I received a joyous commendation from the VP for correcting my attitude, left there within a few weeks, and they had to hire three people to do my job. Edit to add, the only way to get raises in that industry was to change jobs periodically. I proceeded to job hop every two years after that and upped my income by over 500% by leveraging my successes in each job and my varied experience. It was all worth it, and then some. It's just so weird to me how many managers have to learn that if they watch the clock, so do the employees. And our next story. Customer orders something, doesn't give date code to get into where she lives. I work in a retail business that sells lumber. My job is mostly just deliveries. I had two deliveries loaded onto my truck. The second delivery was for a town that we rarely deliver to due to distance, which was over an hour drive away. But it was decided since I was three quarters of the way there with my first delivery, I drop off the item. The customer was called by staff in the store to let them know I was coming that morning as far as I'm aware. The item was a roll of plastic eight feet long but light. I finish my first delivery and try punching in the address for the second in my GPS. There were some issues with the location because the road names weren't matching on the GPS with what my order form said. I give the customer a call to confirm the address, but all I get is a voicemail, so I leave her a message saying I'm on my way, but to call me back so I can confirm where they were. I drive to where the GPS took me, and there was no road or house number that matched. I try calling the customer again, no answer, so I try googling the street on my phone, and the result came up for a little retirement trailer park on the north end of town, and I was on the south end. After fighting through traffic for over 10 minutes, I arrive. I recognize the park right away. This place required a gate code to get in. This gate's only meant for stopping vehicles. There were sidewalks on either side. I call the customer again, no answer, so I call the administration for the park and explain the situation. They said if I type the customer's house number into the keypad, it'll call down to their unit and they have an override. But if the customer didn't answer, I unfortunately can't get in. So I tried the keypad, nothing happened. I took up a map to see where the unit is. It was about a half a mile from the front gate. I called down to my store and talked to the worker who did the order. They were pissed with the customer, saying, her telling us there is a gate would be very helpful to know. She tells me she'll try phoning and to hold tight. After 10 minutes, I get a call back from my coworker saying she can't get a hold of the customer either, and she didn't want to have me not deliver the item since it would be a long drive back. 
So she told me if I could walk to her unit, let her know I'm there, I can walk back and get my truck to deliver her item. As I prepare, I figured I might as well bring the item with me. It wasn't heavy, and it would save going through the park twice. After 10 minutes of walking, I arrive and peer into the backyard and see the customer working. I call out, informing who I am, and I was pretty blunt in saying we called multiple times because we didn't have any code to get through the gate. She asked me how I managed to get here, and I told her I walked with her item. She immediately started saying how sorry she was, how embarrassed she was, just saying sorry again and again and again. I just simply said, if you order anything more in the future, just remember to give us the gate code. She kept saying how sorry she was and told me to wait. I realized she was getting me a tip, so after a moment, she came back, giving me a $5 bill. I know, kind of bad to think, but I thought, I walked a half a mile with a large roll of plastic and you give me $5? I just kept polite and said thank you and walked back to my vehicle with her saying how sorry she was. So on my walk back, I phoned my coworker, let them know what went on, and they told me when they phone the customer later, they'll be charging her a larger delivery fee, considering what I had to do. This delivery probably took closer to an hour longer than it would have under normal circumstances. So that was my fun. I had to drive back and have a short lunch because I had at least eight more deliveries to try and complete before the end of the day. And our last story. The fake HOA in our neighborhood. Started off as a neighborly gesture, cheap $75 a year, cleared the roads, some spring dumpsters, a summer barbecue. Then the board housewife, who had nothing better to do, became president of the HOA. They election meetings and, of course, raised the HOA fee 200%. She talked about new street signs, new roads, sidewalls, and gates into the entrance of the neighborhood. Mind you, our home was the original property back in the 1940s. I assume the owners sold off the land for homes around us. No common areas, neighborhood pool, park, trails, nothing. I refused to pay or be any part of the little HOA club. She called as I was past due on my HOA fees. I politely told her there is no HOA here. That's why we bought this home. She asked if we use the roads, and I said, yes, of course. Her response was, well, you need to pay to use my roads. I told her I do. It's called property tax. I asked her to never contact me again. Funny, some participated in the HOA. They just put in $15,000 worth of stop signs. We have five intersections. She wants to resurface the over one mile road now. Good luck with that. I'll gladly be the one they hate who hangs her laundry out to dry. I'll call someone about the road. I imagine the city would be very interested to hear about someone altering the roads. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.